Um, Pam, thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you. Let's start with a big question. What is the story of civil rights in this state? Well, you know, let me just say this, that Bob Moses said that Mississippi was like a trim in the iceberg. If we could break Mississippi, we could break the nation. So we're looking at a dark tunnel of history, 30 years of history, 1945 to 1975, where it was dark for the many people that lived here who were trying to have rights. So that's what the civil rights movement was about. That's a long period of time. How do you tell that story in one museum? It's not easy. <laughs> it really isn't easy. But the thing about it is that we did. We were able to tell that story. It's, it's some of the ways that you go through this museum are very uncomfortable, but the movement was uncomfortable. So we want to bring people into the time so they can understand. I just want to point out, we are hearing some finishing touches yes, on the are. museum. Yes, we are. How dark is the darkness in this museum? Are people going to see things that will make them feel uncomfortable? Oh, yes, the movement was uncomfortable. I always say, put yourself in their places. I, my, the, the biggest question that I ask people when they walk in here, is there a cause that you would die for? Is there a cause that you would lay your life on the line for today, as these lights that came into the state of Mississippi did? It's a hard question to answer, but they came in, all different races, all different backgrounds, to help make Mississippi the best Mississippi that they could at that particular time. Does civil rights in this museum have an end? When people get done touring the museum, mm -hmm. is there an end? No, <laughs> it's not an end because in Gallery 8, the last gallery is, where do we go from here? What's your charge? What is your chore? What do you do after you've seen all this, uh, which is magnificent, which is dark, which is amazing. After you've seen all this, what happens next with you? What is your light? How do you allow your light to shine in this state? How much time would you expect people to stay to see everything? Well, it just depends. It can go from one hour if you do a fast track to two to three hours. We want people to stand. We want people to read. We want people to come into the Rotunda area and reflect on what they've seen. So it just depends. Are you ready to show us I am something? ready. I'm ready. Then let's go. Okay. This part of the museum is called Mississippi in black and white. Where are we in history? Well, we go from the transatlantic slave trade all the way to the Civil War, to the Emancipation Proclamation. We come into Reconstruction when we get into Mississippi in black and white. Well, well African Americans were now, as we say, Americans. They're trying to uh, have a flowering community, somewhere to live. They're politicians. All these things are happening. And then all of a sudden, it starts to get dark. We have black holes, we have Jim Crow images, the, the lynching tree, uh, and, and the lynching monoliths that we have in here that uh, talk about the different people who were lynched in the state of Mississippi. The monoliths, one, two, three, four, five, with names on both sides from top to bottom. Yes. And people being lynched for various reasons. Yes. For no reason, really. Yes, yes. Uh, can you talk about some, uh, first of all, how on earth did you get all of the names and all of the reasons given for why they were lynched? Well, all of that information has always been documented because it had to be documented in a town where someone was lynched. And of course, we don't have everybody. There are a lot of people out there that were lynched that their souls and their bodies are still at the bottom of rivers. Let's just be real here. But the thing is, is that this museum wanted to pay homage to the many souls that we did know about of all different races. There's one gentleman in particular that I'm always thinking about a lot out of Rankin County. And uh, he was lynched for what they called outrage. And outrage at that particular time meant raping. But what I look at is this man had a family, five children and a wife. Now, he still has family that lives in, this, in, in Rankin County, and that's, that's something for me. And I, I just think about the backgrounds of the many people who were lynched here in the state of Mississippi. That brings a question, what about people who, who live in the area or who live in Mississippi whose relatives or forefathers are, are represented in this museum. How intimately tied are they to the well, museum? Well, we've, we've seen this happen. Uh, we had a sneak peek a couple of weeks ago, and a lady came in and found her uncle on the list. That was a time for the family to come around this, this monolith and just be a part of it. It was, it was something, it was, it was spiritual. It was sacred. 
because it was like they were memorializing their, their relative. It was a complete surprise. Did she know that he might be in here? She didn't know he would be in here. She knew he had been lynched, but just to see the name now. So they'll come back many times and bring other relatives just to see that name. It's almost like going to the war memorial where you're getting mm -hmm. that sheet of paper and you, you can't scratch on these like that, but to be able to see it, to be able to take a photograph of it, that's something. That's something for What us. else do we see in this section? Well, this, this whole sex, section of this area tells you, you, you'll walk across a red line and you hear somebody yell out at you. And what we want to do is bring you in the time, bring you in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. What do you so, mean someone's going to yell at me? The, somebody may say, boy, get off that sidewalk. These are things that were happening to African Americans. They had to get off of the sidewalk. So we want people to hear that, gal, you know you say thank you to me. Those were things that were happening. So it's not anything to shun what happened or make people look bad. We are authentic and truthful in the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum. Pam, what would you like to show us next? We're going to go to Gallery 5, I Question America. This is a replica of a church? Yes, it is. Of you know, what period? The 1960s, and, and what we think about is that during the protests, during the marches, people came to the churches at night to be able to pray, to find their faith that they needed to, because they needed to keep going. So this is where they came to the church. And it turned out not to be a safe haven? Not all the time. Sometimes, maybe, there were bombings at the church, but most people, it was a safe haven because you came into the church to get closer to God because, again, if you wanted to go out and march, you had to have faith to do that, that you, were going to be, you would be able to come back from this. So it was very important. Fannie Lou Hamer spent a lot of time in the church. This amazing woman and her voice was so angelic. And when I think about Fannie Lou Hamer in the church, the first thing I think about is the song, This Little Light of Mine. And uh, it, it goes something like, This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And just to hear that song, that brought people together. They're going to show a movie in here, and there will actually be effects inside this room? Yes, it will. When we talk about the bombing, the lights, the windows will turn red. When you talk about just different images will come up, which is going to be really have an effect on you while you're watching the film. This church is within a larger exhibit called I Question America. What does that mean? Well, we have it here because... Fannie Lou Hamer made that statement, I question America. You know, she went to New Jersey uh, as a part, as a, as a delegate with the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. And it was important for her to ask those questions when she got up there on that stage, when this black woman from Ruville, Mississippi had that chance to be able to speak and tell them, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being treated the way that she and all of us have been treated. So that was important for her. So, of course, we honor her by naming this gallery, I Question America. Pam Jr., you are the director of this Civil Rights Museum. I am. And I thank you so much for giving us the tour today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.